Okay, so I'm back online. I'm sincerely hoping that the network will just stay. I'm actually on Todd Milan Bridge, so pardon me. I've been in the hold for a while now, but we just have to do what we have to do. So, like I was saying, that we need to understand how the mind of a child works. And I told you from the beginning that once you give birth to a child, a child comes to this earth with what we call curiosity. Because look at a child like... Um, a system that you just brought remember i told you that a child is just like a product that you would need to go through the product um, recommendations or everything before you will be able to use or deal with that product so we would not like in a child to you buying a system your laptop a computer or anything so a child comes with a blank sheet a blank space there is nothing in the mind of a child once that child comes to earth so we are the one as child handlers as caregivers that will now deliberately start installing systems into or I would say applications into the system of the child so gradually you keep putting things in the mind of a child keep putting things in the mind of a child then children do what we call introjecting so as you're putting things in their mind they are also eating everything around their environment they are eating everything around their environment they are watching you remember i said from the beginning that you need to understand that you cannot raise a child thinking like an adult it is very it is it is totally difficult because you don't think the same way you don't reason the same way and you don't look at life the same way adults look at life through the eyes of judgment when we look at things we judge this thing is not supposed to be like that this one is not supposed to be like that that is how adults you know respond to, to their environment but children don't respond to the environment like that they actually come from the place of curiosity that is why it, it, we don't really understand why children do things the way they do sometimes when they throw cups when they mess around the house they are trying to just discover their world and environment but to you as an adult because you, are, you already have a you know a program a program that you have in your system so the way you interpret your world will be different from the way a child is interpreting his world when a child carries a cup full of water the child pours it like this and he's so the thing is so amused and say wow what are you pouring from this cup he goes to pick some so some uh, he goes to get some water again pours it in the cup throw it out he's enjoying it he's discovering that so water can actually pour out of a cup interesting they keep doing it that is the interpretation of their own world they are explorers they are discovering but you as an adult when you come in you have a different interpretation say why are you messing up the house you are a dirty boy you're a dirty girl and there's a conflicting interpretation you keep wondering what the child will keep wondering what have i done this time i'm only pouring water out of a cup and i want to enjoy how it feels can you now see that it will be difficult to raise a child thinking like an adult because our system applications are quite different so that is another thing that you should know then looking at the mind of a child are you aware that naturally the brain develops from the back so as a child the brain has not been developed fully so as the brain is developing it starts developing from the back from the back then it moves forward the brain and the full brain manifests i think between the age of 18 and 25 so whatever a child does you will understand you should understand that they cannot do like adults because they have not developed their brain fully a lot of adults don't understand this so there is somewhere in front of the brain of a child that has not been developed even at the age of 18 and that place is what we call the prefrontal cortex that is the last place of the brain that develops and it doesn't develop not until after 18 some of them develop it around 20 21 well around 25 so that part of the brain is what we make a child think like an adult so what am i saying this pre this prefrontal cortex houses where you have your logic your reasoning your problem solving your planning your memory focus and attention and you know the capability for you to develop or carry out goals so 
for a child a child doesn't have the capability to memorize so well to plan i mean can you imagine like um a five-year-old you know having a board meeting or a 15 year old having a board meeting it's not possible because they have not developed that capacity for logic so anytime a child does something the child is doing it because there are some things that has not been developed in the mind of the child so it is quite difficult for a child to reason like an adult when we understand this we will come from the place of empathy rather than judgment remember i told you that as adults we judge so everything or anything a child does we look at it from the place of judgment and that is why it's always difficult for us to have a good rapport with them and even when we are judging we do something we call aggressiveness when you want to understand the mind of a child you have to be assertive there are two things is that you are aggressive or you are assertive aggressiveness means that you are passing the pain across to the child why let me give you an instance the child throws out your water it is not about the water really but as an adult you're already thinking ahead how you clean the ground how you will mop how the ground the glass got broken how you have to buy another one so when you are trying to deal with that child you deal with that child through pain but if you come from the place of empathy and you realize that this child has not developed the capacity to reason the capacity to plan the capacity to memorize the capacity to think logically as an adult then the mindset you change that perhaps this child doesn't even know what it's going to cost me to buy another glass cup. This child doesn't know that when she pours this water on the floor, somebody can actually sleep and fall because their mental capacity or their mental brain doesn't have the capacity to understand that. So when we come from the place of empathy, we now become assertive. Now assertiveness is when you express the message a child does something deal with the issue what have you done how do we move ahead how will you learn from this then you move on but because of our conditioning and the way that we were we, we've been brought up we most times try to be aggressive because we pass across our pain rather than the message so when we begin to understand that you know it is not ideal for us to come from the place of aggressiveness rather from assertiveness trying to pass the message across let us deal with the issue this thing has happened let us deal with it we don't need to bring the personality of a child into the matter because the child doesn't even have the capacity to think like an adult so a child will never never behave like an adult imagine a child of three years old coming to coming to you and sitting with that mommy we need to talk won't you run away but most times we all, we all have this assumption that children should behave like an adult in fact we even see it into the unconscious don't you know you are not a child what is wrong with you don't you know you have younger sisters and i'm sorry i wonder how parents think that way because if we continue like that we are consciously eradicating childhood experiences we are telling them that they should not go through the process of childhood we are trying to eradicate childhood because we want them to quickly go grow up quickly so today i am telling you that the mind of a child cannot work like the mind of an adult because as a child you are beginning to put in applications applications softwares you are developing them you are developing them gradually and that is how they now grow so how do you now you know help them to develop their keep thinking capacity because as a child even if as a parent you don't help them to think that is being assertive when you always put their person into it that is passing the pain because when you put their person into the matter you are passing the pain when you say look at your big head are you blind can't you see what you have done that means you're telling the child that the child is not good enough and as adults we all make mistakes we all do all those things 
but because we, we believe we are adults we don't owe anybody any explanation but as children we expect them to be perfect there are no perfect child anyway there's nothing like a perfect child in fact there's nothing like a perfect adult so by the time we understand that the brain develops from the back and the brain doesn't fully develop until between the age of 18 and 25 and the prefrontal, the prefrontal cortex of a child doesn't develop at that age then we will understand that there are so many things that a child is doing just because they are children a child has to behave like a child oftentimes we expect children to behave like adults it doesn't work it can never work by the time we try to take adulthood out of childhood then you will have a good rapport with your child a child should be allowed to experience childhood a child should be allowed to go through the process because the process is the content if you do not allow a child to go through the process of trying to expand their mind or trying to build their mental capacity then you begin to raise a dysfunctional adult when you don't allow them to pass through that time that they need to experience failure that they need to experience that oh glasses can be broken and things is not supposed to go the normal way There's, there should be some you know here and there up and down when you don't allow children to understand that mistakes have, 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 have actually feedback that failure is a feedback that whatever they are doing has nothing to do with their personality then you will now understand that if we don't allow them to pass through life like that life will leave them that is why we have a lot of adults that are so dysfunctional because you did not give them the capacity to think I tell parents and child handlers that there's this thing that we say to children we call it naughty corner and it speaks negativity into their unconsciousness when you tell them go to the naughty corner you are actually abusing their personality you are actually telling them that they are naughty so I would say tell them to go to the thinking corner when you say thinking corner thinking corner will help them to reflect on what they have done right or wrong then they come back to you and you explain to them to call their name why did you have to do this what do you think about it when you start giving children the opportunity to think then you are opening an opportunity for rapport when you begin to develop rapport with your child then you now begin to understand the mind of a child a lot of care handlers and parents they always advise more than they encourage and if you want to understand the mind of a child you have to stop advising and begin to encourage because encouragement opens up the mental capacity of a child are we aware the attention span of a child is like 20 minutes so anything you say after 20 minutes you're speaking over their head what am i trying to say that 20 minutes is the best time for you to occupy create a rapport between you and your child and you can now start asking them questions even when they you think they've done bad because you see nothing means anything as the interpretation that you have given to it so when you say a child has done something bad they are the one that has given an interpretation to it that it is bad in the in the mind in the world of a child there's nothing like bad there's nothing like good they are just explorers they are just discovering their world they're just doing everything they need to know then how do you now create an impression or imprint in their unconscious because you see the best learnings are learned at the unconscious that is why we have to be very careful about the language that we use around children even when you are trying to you know encourage them we have language we use for children and we should also understand that the mind of a child doesn't understand the word not not they don't understand the brain has not developed that mental capacity to discern N-O. So when you want to deal with your child, you don't want your child to do something. What do you do? Let me give you an example. You see a child jumping around the house. This is normal by the way because you don't understand. You do not want to talk to this person. This is not a... Uh,
to do not what you don't want the child to do so if you don't want your child to do something okay you can't hear me can you hear me now can you hear me now can you hear me now hello can you hear me now Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I have raised the volume. Can you hear me now? Hello? The voice is back. Okay, awesome. So can you hear me? Can you all hear me now? Wendy, can you hear me? Chin Yere, favor, can you hear me? All right, favor, awesome, you can hear me now. So I was talking about focusing and directing your energy on healthy behavior. Focus and direct your energy on healthy behavior because it is whatever you focus on that will expand. So I was trying to give an example of what focus mean. I said, focus on your focus. Somebody should help me write it out. Focus on your focus. Focus on your focus. What you focus on will expand because energy goes through the channel of focus. So when you are trying to tell a child to do something, focus on what you want the child to do rather than what you don't want the child to do. By the power of repetition, then there will be an imprint in the child's unconscious to do what you want the child to do. Yes, thank you to yourself. Focus on your focus. Focus on your focus because energy flows through what you focus on. Focus, what you focus on will surely expand. What you focus on will surely expand. So as a child handler, as a parent, child caregiver, whatever you are, or the fact that you are, you know, handling a child, focus on what you want the child to do. Focus on what you want the child to do. Then you will realize by the power of repetition, whatever you want the child to do will go to the child unconscious and you will see that the child will do what you want them to do. We have been conditioned to always focus on the negative. We focus more on the negative. That is why it keeps expanding because it is what we see that we see. We cannot see what we are not looking for. So why do we always focus our attention on the all the unhealthy behavior of a child or all the area of weaknesses? We concentrate more on that and it doesn't help the mind of the child. What you are actually telling the mind of the child is that they are not good enough because you only focus on the things that need improvement, not on the things that are good. So as a parent, as a child and like whoever you are, please, it is very important for you to keep focusing on their strength keep focusing on what you know will help their mental capacity and I see that a lot of parents don't deliberate with their children they don't have they don't have what I call 
rapport they don't engage their children when you don't engage a child you will not understand what is in the mind of a child and i'll give you an example if you want to start a conversation with a child for example what you need to do is to first of all ask a question you don't ask you don't you don't have a rapport with the child by demanding and like i said from the beginning we do a lot of advising more than we encourage and i told you that the attention span of a child is very short so once you're not connecting with them they do what we call zone off they are listening they are hearing you but they are not listening they are two different things you can hear somebody and may not really listen to them so children do a lot of hearing but they don't do a lot of listening so if you want your child to listen to you you have to engage them by first of all not coming from the place of judgment by empathizing with them being curious to understand why they are doing what they are doing at that time when you don't come from the place of judgment and you you know empathize with them then you cannot create a form of rapport and you engage them let me give you an example now if you want to know if you want to discuss child sexual abuse with a child or sex education or whatever you don't start lecturing them we are so used to you know lecturing children no the first thing you do to a child is ask what do you think what is sex education what do you understand the sex education because you need actually need to understand what that child has introjected around the environment first you need to know the you know application that has been installed into the child system before you put your own application on it you know it's just like a system like i told you like a computer if a computer has a virus already there is no amount of good applications that you install into the system of that computer everything will go bad so you need to first of all know what is in the mind of that child by engaging them asking them questions and doing what we call pacing pacing simply means that you develop what we call an open-ended question so when you ask them a question they give you an answer you pick your question from their answer you pick something from their question then you from the answer then you throw it back as a question to them so you must always engage them that way you would not believe the level of rapport you have with a child please try. so network is fumbling but I'll, I'll continue so what am i trying to say you need to understand how the mind of a child works the mind of it the mind of a child works from the place of curiosity and if you are not curious enough as an adult you cannot understand what is the mind of a child remember i told you that a child has not developed what i call the prefrontal cortex or what psychologists call the prefrontal cortex because it is that part of the brain that develops last. That part of the brain has what we have the thinking capacity, the logical capacity, problem solving capacity, how you can plan, how you can focus on attention. So when you are when you see a child has a very low focus on attention time, because they have not physically developed that part of the brain that can stimulate focus and sustain to reduce so when you see a child to be focused or has a very low attention, to develop that thinking capacity. You can't hear me. Can you hear me? Hello, yeah, I guess it's Network Wendy. So, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hello, can you hear me? Somebody should say yes if they can hear me so that I can continue. Hello, hello, okay, so let me just continue i hope you can still hear me so what am i saying if you want to understand what goes on 
in the mind of a child you have to reduce your expectation as an adult because oftentimes we always have high expectations from children things that they do not have the capacity to do that is what we expect them to do and we imprint on them that they are not good enough I spoke about language we have to be very careful the kind of language that we speak around children because children eat whatever comes around them are you aware that children do more of what we do than what we say because they are more emotional than us they work with their emotions more than adults you know I told you that I just judge a lot so they hardly use their emotions but children half of the time they use their emotions. That is why you see toddlers, they cry, they throw tantrums just to get your attention because they have not developed that thinking capacity for them to take down and start thinking logically and say, okay, what can I do? What can I resolve this issue? The best way that comes easily to them is through their emotion. So when you tell a child, stop crying, that means you are trying to destroy childhood process. And remember I told you that the process is the content. If you do not allow a child to go through normal childhood processes, then that child will become a dysfunctional adult. We need to be careful what we do around children. Can you hear me? Okay, so they said I should go ahead. So what am I trying to say? Reduce your expectations as adults. Children must behave like children. Children can never behave like an adult. It is not possible because they have not built that mental capacity to behave like adults. So if you want to understand what goes on in the mind of a child, you have to engage them. Remember I told you, engage them. Talk less and listen more. Talk less and listen more. Adults, talk less and listen more. Encourage more than your advice. When you encourage them, you build their mental capacity to empathize with them as well. Then they understand what it means to feel bad or to feel good. I hope we are following what I'm saying. When you begin to look at the world through the eye of a child, then you now begin to understand that most of the things that children do are not to indict you or spite you. They are just pure explorers. They are just doing things the best way they think they can. We need to start having that mindset. Then we will stop running on autopilot because I realize that we already always have an interpretation to every behavior of a child. But when we subject that our feelings to thinking think about it first why why is this child doing this but because we have this assumption in our mind that children do these things just to get themselves in trouble that is not correct they are doing it just to get more of what is happening in the environment they're just being children they're just being children and we they will always behave like children so when you now take out that adults Pain out of your mind and you start being curious you want to know more you want to probe you want to know why when you're why why is the child doing this thing why why do I think this child is behaving this way then you will realize that most of the things we do we are beating children we are punishing them simply because they are children when you think that a, a child should behave the way you are behaving what you are doing what you are saying to us is you want to take out childhood you don't want the child to go through childhood children must go through childhood because whatever they are as a child is what they will become as an adult so if you don't build them to empathize to understand their world in the best way they can then they grow up becoming a dysfunctional adult I hope we understand all this, what I'm saying. So let us start thinking, how do I understand my child? And I tell you that every child is unique. The way, the way a, a child A will react or respond to something will be different 
from the way child B will react. So you have to understand your child. One of the issues we, we have with adults is again, adults want to raise a child they wish they have, not the child they have. I will say that again. Adults want to raise a child they wish they have, not the one they have. So oftentimes, adults are not patient enough to understand the child they have rather they have the mindset of the kind of child they think they have there are two different things a child you think you have is different from the child you have so we need to understand all these principles that goes around childhood, childhood preservation, and childhood memories. We should understand. I say it again. It is not possible for us to raise a child thinking like an adult. Because adulthood is different from childhood. And if you don't allow children to transit, to transit from childhood into adulthood, in the normal developmental milestones, they become dysfunctional adults. What goes through the mind of a child? You want to know? Engage them. And do not come from the place of judgment. Do not ask them questions. Do not demand questions from them. Engage them. And you have to be very careful with your language around them. Be very careful about the language you speak around them because I told you that the best learnings are learned from the unconscious. And our children do more of what you do than what you say. Because children do more of what you do than what you say. That is why you find a two-year-old child breastfeeding her baby. After all, you have never taught her. She has never learned anything you have never sat her down to say this is how to breastfeed a child. But they are seeing things and like I told you from the beginning that they introject. Introjection means they eat everything they see around. And see, there is no question a child asks you that is silly. You need to know that you are the one that is giving an interpretation to it that it is silly. There is nothing like silly in the world of a child. There is nothing like stupid in the world of a child. What they are simply doing is they are trying to, you know, feed their curiosity. This thing is happening like this. Why is it happening like this? And it is even nice enough for them to even ask you because most children will not ask depending on the kind of adults around them. They will not ask you if you don't create a good rapport around the child. They would rather go outside. So if a child comes to you, for instance, and say, Mommy, what is penis? I expect you to now throw the question back at them and say, What do you think? I don't expect you to say, Ha, ah, what do you mean? Where did he hear the word from? You sport child. You have actually destroyed the curiosity of that child. So whenever a child comes to you and asks you a question, that is one of the very beautiful ways to start engaging that child. So the next thing you tell them is, what do you think a penis is? You remember I told you that you need to understand what is in their mind first before you now start installing your own application into their system. Else you will, you will destroy their mental capacity. Then, what you are trying to tell them, if you don't give them the correct answer, or if you don't engage them, or if you don't attend to them, is then they don't need to understand what is happening around their world. We have to be careful for us to understand what is happening in the mind of a child. We need to think like a child. Children are curious. They want to see everything. They want to know everything. They want to, so yeah, they soak everything up. Thank you. They soak it all up. So that is why you have to be very careful. There's nothing like he's a child, she's a child. No. And I bet you as adults, if I ask you that there are some things that your parents or adults that were around you when you were growing up, that they did when you were a child, you can vividly remember. That is the same thing that is happening to your children now. 
So look for every opportunity to engage them. I am not telling you to discuss with them. They are two different things. You engage them. Engagement means that you have to do the listening and they have to do the talking. Because when you do more of the talking, the interpretation they get is that you are judging them. And I tell you from my experience that what these children know these days, you don't know half of what they know. So when you come from the fact that you are adult, you are better, you know better, you see better, they keep quiet and they look at you. Rather, they will decide to zone out. They will just zone out and they will just be looking at you. And I have told you that listening is different from hearing. If a child zone out on you, they will just hear you. They will not listen to you. And when children listen to you, it touches their unconscious. Because I told you that best learnings are learned from the unconscious. And how do you engage them? I keep emphasizing this because if you actually want to know what goes on in the mind of a child, you need to understand all these principles. You engage them by asking them questions. Not interrogative question like a uh hey, -huh. they said they should start asking you questions now. You yeah, come and sit down. You know, we have funny, we, we have our ways, parents, and we have to be careful. Are you, are you aware that effective communication? I need to say this as well because when I say engage, I'm not talking about verbal alone, verbal is just 70, 7 seven percent of effective communication. Verbal is just 7% of effective communication. So if you really want to understand the mind of a child, you need to use the other 73%, 93%, yeah, which is your body language and your tonality. So when you are engaging a child, you have to be careful about your tonality. You know, I told you that children listen to emotions more than they listen to rational thinking because they have not been built to understand how to be rational or how to be logical. So the emotional center of their brain is the one that works more. The emotional center is on fire. It works like magic. So you have to be careful your body language around them. You have to be careful the tonality. If you want to say, yes, I love you, your body functioning, your tonality, your body physiology, your eyes, everything must conform with yes. I tell you, if your no sounds like yes, they know. Even though they may not tell you, but they know. And there's a way they zone out. And it will be difficult for you to understand the mind of a child if they zone out. Once they zone out, you are just saying your thing and they are not listening again. Because they see you as being judgmental. And that is one of the things I tell a lot of parents who have, who have teenagers in their house. When your yes is sounding like a no, your teenager will zone out. When your no is sounding like a yes, they will zone out. So please, when you want to engage them, let your communication be effective. 7% verbal, the rest are body language and tonality. And I told you about healthy languages around children. I will give you an example. When you want to look at a cup that has water, instead of you to say half empty, say half full. When you focus on the healthy behavior or the healthy language for children, you will further develop their mental capacity. They will focus more on healthy things in life rather than on healthy things. Even though we are not saying that we should overlook on healthy things, but rather let us focus on the healthy ones, then work on the unhealthy ones. That is the best way to understand how the mind of a child works. Do I still have time? Okay, so I still have time. So I hope we understand all these things that I'm telling you because I told you that for you to understand a child, think like a child. For you to understand that it's like a, understand a child, think like a child. Be curious. Why are they doing this thing that they are doing? Do not give your own interpretations to their behavior. 
find out the reason why they are doing that thing you will be amazed that the reason why they are doing what they are doing it is different from your own interpretation nothing means anything except the interpretation you are giving to it so when you are you know, walking around the child do not give your own interpretation about their attitude when you give an interpretation about their attitude then you are destroying them and destroying their you know childhood emotional experiences you are destroying their childhood preservation you are trying to tell them now hey it is time for you to become an adult and please parents stop saying are you a child please the person is a child the child is a child if the child is 17.9999999 years old, please, the child is still a child. So let us change our language if we want to understand what goes on in their mind. Let us stop saying, are you a child? What is wrong with you? Can't you take care of yourself? We have our ways. We need to start developing ways to deal with a child. I don't know. If Wendy, I will take excuse. This is, and I know she took it out of this audio book. I have an audio book that is written. The topic is in a child's mind, and I'm sure that was the reason why she gave me that topic because of the audio book. So, if you actually really want to listen over and over and over and over again and understand the behavioral patterns of a child, why does a child behave in a certain way? Why is a child doing this thing? And if a child is doing this thing, why? How? How do I respond? And you know, a lot of times. You know, I talked about assertiveness and aggressiveness. A lot of times we react, we don't respond. So when you want to understand how the mind of a child works, let us rather respond. Response means that you are attacking the issue. But when you react, you are passing your pain. And 90% of the time, adults pass their pain more than the message learn to always pass your message not the pain you know about people will say i want to call kobe they didn't beg you to bring them to the earth so let us learn patience and perseverance most of the issues we have with children not understanding how their mind works is that because we are not patient enough to understand who they are we are quick to judge them. We are quick to give interpretations to their behavior because we already have an anchor. And I'm not talking about anchor today, but just know that the way you behave to a child is, you know, most times depends on the anchor that you have growing up. It depends on how you were you know raised as a child so we do what we call projection and why we do mo that most often is that we don't want to we don't want our children to become what we became or what we are becoming so we try to shield them from all the mistakes that we have done meanwhile psychology says that projection when you do projection your child will end up turning to be like you and that is why i talked about focus you don't want your child to fail mass. You don't want your child to fail mass. You don't want your child to fail mass. At the end of the day, your child will fail mass. Why? Because you are focusing your attention on you don't want your child to fail mass. You don't want your child to fail mass. Why not, rather than focus your energy on I want my child to pass mass. I want my child to pass mass. I want my child to pass mass. Do we understand that now? I have said it from the beginning that our focus are not on healthy things. We are focusing on things that are unhealthy. And that is why we keep say, we keep singing it every time. If the child, if we think that the child is naughty, we keep seeing all the naughtiness in the child. We don't see any other thing in the child except being naughty. And that's because that is where our focus is on. And that is where our energy we channel into. So in a child's mind is an audio book. And it will give you an insight, more insight. <laughs> everything and ah uh, i'm just giving examples and all that it will give you an insight into who a child is and i told you that children are unique if you have a billion of them they can't have the same characteristics no they are very unique yeah wendy 
the way you were parented is the way you are projecting your parenting on your children because you don't want you you don't want your children to become like you so you are projecting but it's a topic for another day i just need you to know that most of the time the things we do is projection projection yes lord you have mercy on us so let me answer questions let me see is there any question is there any question that we need to answer i hope we have learned a lot from this one hour session i hope our attitude or our behavior will change from today and i tell you that when we change our children will change because most of the responsibility is on us you know i told you that you cannot see what you're not looking for it's not possible you can't see what you're looking what you're not looking for so if you are seeing a naughty child you you start you continue seeing a naughty child but if you see a child who is willing to learn who doesn't understand what is happening in his environment who is just you know innocently misbehaving then you will now begin to you know put your energy and focus on the healthy behavior you will now begin to empathize and say, oh, this child needs to understand what life is all about. You know, adults to do something. We expect children to know what we have not told them to know. Are we aware? We expect children to know what we have not told them to know. So that's where you hear words like, don't you know you're not supposed to put it there? Don't you know you're not supposed to sit down there? How will you do something like that? But when you search deeper and when you think deeper, you will realize that you have not even told them not to do that thing or to do that thing in the first place. But in our mind, we believe Holy Spirit, or I don't know, something, one teacher should have taught them that thing. Meanwhile, we have not taken our time to teach them. And are you aware that for children, there is nothing as a bad intention every intention in life starts with good intention it is our interpretation that give, that makes it either bad or good at the end of the day so anything a child is doing is coming from the awareness of goodness if they are throwing your cup away or they are breaking your glass honestly they want to become a scientist is good intention because they are actually enjoying their life and nothing is wrong with the way they are thinking but because we have already we already have a mindset as an adult and we already believe certain things are supposed to be done in a certain way then we will now begin to do our projection on children thank you so much everybody i enjoyed myself i hope there are questions and if there are no questions can we just say our prayers <laughs> i'm just joking anyway i just go home i'm still in the car i just want to ensure that we finish this class i hope that we have been able to understand the mind of a child and how the mind of a child works i hope we have been able to understand that a child cannot think like an adult i hope you have been able to understand that for you to raise a whole child for you to raise a child that would thrive in adulthood you have to stop raising them by thinking like an adult Ad adults you know what adults already have different virus in their system application are you aware they already have all those things we already have we had a dysfunctional upbringing so if we bring it and project it on them you are raising them the way you are raised too. unconsciously you are doing that so we need to be careful because we already have system application if you are 40 years old like me that means they have installed different applications for the past 40 years into your system but as a child, they are just developing their system applications gradually, gradually, gradually. So they don't have the capacity of the applications that you have in your own unconscious. 
So we have to know, understand that and look at parenting from empathy. Parents from today, parents from empathy. Parents from curiosity. Raise children thinking like them. Try to discover their world in their world. It will be very disastrous to rush childhood and allow children to just transit into adulthood without enjoying the process and the content of childhood. Alright, thank you. So let me just answer this question. If you are guiding your child to build on your successes, is that still projection or to lead a successful life? Okay, so when you say that successful life is subjective, what success is to you? may not necessarily be success to your child and that was why i said from the beginning and this is a very clear indication that parents raise the child they wish to have not the child they have perhaps have you discovered your child do you understand that child do you know the peculiarity of that child what makes you think that your success is his success what makes you think the definition of your own success is the definition of his own success you need to find your child out and understand what success means to him and i tell you you don't as a parent you don't have the capacity to change your child are you aware the only capacity you have is to influence so that is one of the problems or the challenges we have parents as well they want to change their children no human being has the capacity to to change another human being the only capacity you have is to influence is to guide is to direct they don't belong to you they don't belong to you they were given to you to lead and direct i hope i've been able to answer that question so success is very very subjective you need to understand what success means to that child all right so well in insight as the adult you don't see your upbringing as unfortunate some of our parents did a good job okay so what i'm saying is dysfunctional can also be subjective even if you were raised you feel that you were raised well and the parents did a good job it's like now parenting paradigm is shifting in fact it's shifting every day the meaning of a good job as a day may not be the standard one now so what i'm saying really is the way you are raised has to be different from the way you are going to raise your child i am not saying that you just totally take out everything that you you are le you learned when you, you were being raised no what i'm saying is you need to understand a child before you can now infuse your own pattern of parenting on them. And if you have two, two children, you can't parent them the same way. I hope we are aware. You need to understand the peculiarity of what is happening in, in the child's mind, each of them. If you have 10 of them, you have to understand their mind in 10 ways. No child is the same thing. You need to understand their peculiarity. Who is this child? How do I make the best use? How do I utilize this product that God has given me? How do I check the troubleshooting? How do I understand the love languages? What is the personality of this child? How best can I raise this child for who he is? Not who you think he is. I hope we got that clear okay so is there any other question if there is no other question wendy can i call it a day thank you so much it's been an awesome journey i've really had a very busy day but i seriously look forward to this and i'm happy we are here and we are learning wendy love you so much you're doing a great 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 and wonderful job I look forward to listening to the other speakers as well. Thank you, mothers, fathers, child handlers, caregivers, everybody who are taking out their time to listen to what we are sharing this evening. Yes, Chinyere, more children, more work. Parents need to, to understand this, that you need to deal with children uniquely because no two childs are alike.
thank you so much for listening to me i really appreciate the opportunity to share to learn to unlearn and relearn thank you so much everybody love you guys and have a wonderful parenting conference thank you bye bye